Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Live with Rye. I'm your host, Rye, and I am so thrilled you are joining me today. Before we start, I just want to thank you all again for your continued love and support throughout my journey with Live with Rye and everything that I'm doing. It means the world to me, and I truly cannot thank you enough. But before we begin, I do have a favor to ask of you. If you're joining us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss an episode of Live with Rye. And if you're joining us on Facebook, hit that thumbs up or give us a heart so I know that you're watching. And be sure to follow me across social media. I love hearing from you and let's continue this conversation. So I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Rye underscore Myers. And I'm on Facebook at official Rye Myers. I love hearing from you and let's continue this conversation. You'll also see my website scrolling across the bottom of the screen, ryethenewsguy.com. Head on over there to rewatch all episodes of Live with Rye and to see all of my other exclusive content, any other episodes you missed, and so much more, including my production company. You'll also see scrolling across the bottom of the screen, ryethenewsguy.com slash donate. I love doing the show and I love creating this content and I would love if you'd consider supporting me to help me to continue doing what I love and creating content. So if you are so inclined, I would love if you'd consider making a donation, go to ridethenewsguy.com slash donate, which is scrolling across the bottom of your screen. And it's also there as well. And if you are so inclined, would love if you would consider a small donation. Thank you for your continued love and support. With that, let's get started. And please help me welcome my very special guest, Paul Russell. Hi, Paul. Hi, Rye. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you. you you're fully embracing uh, the new media and creating your own content, which is absolutely wonderful. Uh, the generation I came from when I used to be an actor before being a casting director and director, uh, new media for us was Pony Express. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, yeah, you know, trying to do it differently than the Pony Express. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. So You're where, welcome. where are you joining us from today? I'm joining you from just outside uh, New York City. Uh, I've been here okay. for quite some time. Uh, used to have my office in the city, but uh, moved it out to a home office. Wonderful. Well, that's exciting. I'm sure you probably have a lot more room uh, in this in Jersey uh, than you do here in the city, so I I understand that. <laughs> and I have trees. I love trees. <laughs> yes, that's important. So so let's get started. How did you get started in your career as a casting director and also a director as well? Tell us, take us back. Um, tell us, you know, how you got started. Uh, well, actually, it began in New Jersey uh, in a school in the middle of a cow pasture where cows literally would stick their heads through the window if the windows were open. Um, I was in chorus, and a uh, chorus teacher knew that I was extremely shy, which most people would find kind of surprising, but I am terribly shy. And he said, you're gonna be in school musical, like it or not. And that's how it began. Uh, I was a professional actor for a while. I worked at places like Domino's Pizza Box Dinner Theater, doing Fiddler on the Roof, serving pepperoni pizza to older audiences. Um, but progress into casting. Um, what actually got me into casting was a summer stock theater producer who was also a deliverer of corpses by day. <laughs> so in the back of his station wagon, he would deliver corpses to a funeral home and at night he would produce Neil Simon. But uh, one day he was bored, uh, didn't like his auditions and he invited me in and that's how it began. But actually it got further along when Someone I knew said, uh, a casting office is looking for an assistant. Would you be interested? I was shaving in the mirror at the time. I said, oh, why the hell not? And that began my journey. Uh, I began with uh, Jay Bender, who just retired recently, then moved on to uh, Mary Cahoon. God bless her, she's no longer with us, but Cosby, uh, the show as well, HBO, uh, Fox. Um, I did the rounds and I went on my own. Uh, and had a lot of clients and still working with clients, but right now as, you know, the recording of this or the live show of this, we're at the end of the pandemic, but that'll change shortly. And as a director, actually that began before I began a casting director. Um, I started directing when I was 17. I created wow. the first uh, all adolescent theater company 
uh, in New Jersey called Stage Right Productions. And that progressed to the point where I was the first director to be picked to direct Mamma Mia after it left Broadway. Uh, so I was the guinea pig director for that. Uh, and I also have done other premieres. I've worked with John Greer uh, in directing the premiere of his A Free Man of Color. Wow. So I, I like being a, a hyphenated person. Yes. It makes life more exciting for me. A true, yes, a true multi-hyphenate for sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I've, listen, that's good to embrace. I've, I've embraced that over the last few months as well. You know, you can really, you can sort of have your cake and eat it too and do all of that, you know? Do you plan to hopefully uh, return to casting as uh, things start to subside and we start to get out of this dark time and return to hopefully performing and live performance again in TV? Oh, yes. And, and it, it's coming back right now as we are, are speaking. I am seeing uh, my colleagues getting back into the game. Uh, I'm seeing actors uh, start to get more auditions. Uh, oh. Right now, though, it's live auditions, but th this is something that I used to do a long time ago. I used to do Skype and Zooming auditions well before uh, the pandemic ever hit. I cast national tour of Million Dollar Quartet completely through online and uh, self-tape. Um, really? When I was directing um, Sister Act, I cast my lead. I never met her. Uh, she was in Utah and uh, gave her the role. So I, I, I see things coming back. Um, and I don't think it's gonna be too long until we're fully back. I, I certainly, certainly agree. What have you learned about yourself as a casting director? And it's uh, being a casting director for me is such a special job, a special role. It takes a special type of person to do it. So what have you learned about yourself over the years as a casting director? I'm a, gosh, I don't know if I can say the word, rhymes with witch. Uh, no, what, what did I learn? Um, that's a damn good question. <laughs> I've, I've learned more recently, this is before uh, some things out in my life, uh, to take pressure off myself. I used to be so much of a perfectionist, um, but you know, that, no, the better, the better lesson is there's no control and you don't need control. To me, casting, a casting director, we're glorified human uh, resources. Um, we just lead the creatives to finding people and we try to bring in the people for our creative team. But there are casting directors out there. I never liked the idea of a casting director putting themselves on a pedestal or actors putting them, casting directors on a pedestal. That's BS for me. Um, we're just someone trying to solve a puzzle and that's what I love is solving puzzles. When I was a kid, I used to do it all the time. But um, uh, that perfectionist, I still got to slap myself silly. I'll be up until 4.30 in the morning sometimes going through my files, going, there's got to be someone I'm missing. Somebody I am missing, I, I can't do it. But it always works out. Yeah, I under believe me, I understand that. It's tough, you know. Uh, it, you can be your own worst critic sometimes. And so I understand that, perfec that perfectionist sort of um, aspect so uh, you know um something else i learned I've just thought of this will shock anyone who's watching who truly only knows the paul russell persona that came out after my first book came out uh which is uh blunt snarky um tough love basically when i first started doing casting i had just jumped over the table as being an actor and director and I was very tactful uh, to actors when I would try to work with them. I mean, this is a days back, not, no one's gonna even remember these pre-screens where we bring actors in live, work with them before we bring the director and uh, other team in, and we help their audition along. And I was too damn tactful to the point where I was hurting the actor's chances. Um, after I got over my shyness and pussyfooting around an actor or anyone I said, I'm not helping them. Uh, I want them to work. I want them to get the job. I'm going to have to be a little bit more blunt and tough love with not being mean. Some people can associate 
tough love with meanness. No, it's not. I came from acting. I love actors dearly. Um, without them, oh my God, I, I wouldn't be here. I truly wouldn't. I owe so much to actors. More, yeah. than, more than most people know. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are wonderful human beings. And you mentioned, you know, in that beginning of that about your book. Let's talk about that. You have written a book. You're, it's and the, the new edition is out. Uh, it's called um, "Acting: Making It Your Making It Your Business." Acting: Her Making It Your Business. How to? I got to look at the old one. Oh, let me look at the new one. Acting: Making Your Business. How to avoid mistakes and achieve success as a working actor. There we go. Um, yes, yeah, it up. Yeah, the, the new cover, nice new cover, as opposed to the original one, which my mother wasn't quite so proud of. Uh, I only found that out uh, when she got the the new one and it was dedicated <laughs> to her. But you no, know, the the book. Um, I had always wanted to write, but that's not the reason I wrote the book. I, I wrote when I was in my late teens. Um, but I used to write for a website that no longer exists. Uh, and another author came along and he found my work and he said, you're a writer. I said, really? You gotta be kidding. Jesus Christ, really? Me? Um, and he introduced me to uh, his editor uh, and they picked me up. But unfortunately that editor passed away. But the book did come out eventually um, and it, it did well. And it, it was originally called uh, Shut Up and Listen. <laughs> I like the title. I like that. Uh, I like that. Random House didn't. Uh, they said tough love would be better, and I said no. It sounds like two 1970s psychotherapy. But we can't we do this, and it's not just me uh, that's in this book. Um, huh? it, it's there are working actors, including uh, Slinius Levia, who's known for Gloria Mendoza in Orange Is the New Black. Uh, Kate Hamill, who's a prolific actress, playwright. Uh, was named uh, Playwright of the Year by Wall Street Journal. She's known for Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice. Uh, Kelly O'Coin from Billions and The Americans. A uh, whole bunch of actors in there. Um, some have major careers that you would recognize and others have what we call the journeyman actors, which is primarily uh, what most actors are. They may not be known to someone like in a mall, if we still right. have more after the pandemic. Um, but they will work nonetheless. Uh, and there are a few actors like that. There's also talent agents and talent managers in here uh, giving advice and everything. But uh, how this developed was I was seeing so many mistakes that were happening in auditions or worse, marketing. Uh, things that made Valpac appear chic in the days of uh, land mail. Now yes. uh, I get emails which just nothing in the email and just a link to go someplace and it's horrible. Um, to me, when you're an actor or an entertainment industry, it's all about image, image, and image. And what you promote out there is what we think of you. If I say uh, of an actor, he's a little bit mature nowadays, Tom Hanks, Three words come to your mind, Rod, about Tom Hanks. What are three adjectives that would come to your mind to describe him? Uh, well, handsome, leading man, um, and kind. Okay. Those are, I mean. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's grounded, trustworthy, congenial. Although congenial is a little bit too sterile. But that has you start to develop a brand, not only uh, in what you do presenting yourself uh, as an actor, but on screen or on stage, because you start to line up the roles that match you. And there's an exercise in my book, in a new book that now I give, that I used to only give at master classes in universities, where we help define you. And that's defining you for how you write when you write your emails to people, how you define yourself as far as dressing for your auditions, whether it's self tape live auditions online or going into a room. Um, you have to create that brand, that persona. Uh, that will clearly define you to us and to talent agents and to managers so that it can go, 
I get it. I know who that person is. I know how to sell them. Or for my end of it, when the actor comes in and going, I have a clear picture of who this actor is, they have a clear picture of who they are. And that's even more important. Yeah. If you don't know who the hell you are as an actor, you're in big trouble. Uh, and it takes a little while for us to get to know who we are. Um, after my recent um, major challenges in life, I'm finding out again who I am and I'm rediscovering myself. Yeah, I, I I love that. That that's great. And it's it's so important that you wrote this book, that you, you know, made this new edition, which is updated for 2021. Um, so let's sort of because you put this in the flyer, which is I think is so interesting. Let's talk about breaking bad and growing good. How can actors do this? And what are some experiences that you've had that can sort of relate to this or um you know, in your career and stuff that can relate to this. Yeah, the breaking back, uh, creating good. I mean, I'm, uh, for most people, as you said, 2021, and by the way, this was published in 2021. So thank God it doesn't have 2020 in front of it. Uh, 2020, that year of the pandemic and all that, mine began somewhere around December 2019, where I lost everything uh, pretty much in my life. I lost a 32-year relationship. I lost uh, my home. I was on the street, in my car, homeless uh, for a while. And this breaking bad, creating good. Uh, at the beginning of it, I was very mournful and down on myself. And more stuff happening. Uh, some health crises started happening, major major health crises. And then my mother went into hospice uh, and she passed away. Uh, just another one on top of it. And this is all coming one after each other. But the breaking bad, creating good. Choices. Now there's nothing I can do about uh, a thing like my mother, yeah. but you, it's the choices you make. You really have to be smart about the choices you make. And in one of my past challenges, which was the relationship and everything I lost with it, I mean, everything, clothes, furnishing, gone. Um, if I had made a choice six months in to that relationship, life would be completely different. Now, I may not be here with you, but uh, it was a song that stopped me from making the correct choice. I listened to a song on the way after a meeting with this person to try to help a producer get them working properly. But the song, uh, Listen to Your Heart Before You Tell Him Goodbye, uh, had me go, no, I'll, I'll stick around with this person who I think I'm going to break up right now because they're they're, they're kind of high maintenance. Um, but it is choices. When all that began uh, in 2019, everything falling apart, I went to someone who was going to take me in temporarily. And he said, you'll find no pity here. I'm not going to hug you. I'm not going to um, console you. And at the time, I was definitely crying, but he said, it's your choices. You make bad choices. And I have made bad choices personally, professionally not. Uh, okay, maybe the pizza box dinner theater. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my most fantastic choices. Working for Ralph Miller, uh, Bucks County Playhouse, that was different, but it really is choices. And also finding your, self again, idealism. I wrote, I write about this heavily uh, in a chapter in the book called um, Being an Actor, Tough Love. Uh, it's more about the emotional and psychological journey of being an actor. The idealism, when you lose your idealism uh, and you start to buy into the bad constantly, um, you lose your game and it's, it really is game over. And when my mother was uh, in her last week of life, I contacted a, a dear friend and said, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. Uh, I've 
been living alone, isolated for the past year because of the pandemic and other reasons. I haven't seen anything beyond this apartment. I'm going crazy. What do I do? And I knew that he had some challenges in his life. And my God, uh, the information that he gave me and just to how to experience life and how to don't let anyone tell you it's too soon. Don't let anyone tell you you can't feel what you feel. Embrace it. Uh, and that helped a lot. And that's also part of breaking bad, creating good, because you've got to get out of the mindset that the, I call it the Eeyore mindset. In fact, I have an Eeyore uh, in my new home. Uh, <laughs> If you keep harping on the woe is me and you keep cycling in your head to thinking over and over again, what's wrong with me? What's what's wrong with everything? You're not good to do well. In fact, today I found this little red book that someone threw out and it was in a yard sale. And it says, if you want to download new things in your mind, you have to make space. Well, oh my God, that's simple but brilliant. How much baggage do we hold on to, uh, and how does that hinder our careers? It can hinder quite a lot, yeah. uh, unfortunately. So, for me, the Breaking Bad. If you start to find yourself, and this goes for career, and it also goes for life choices, you start to see patterns. You really have to start thinking about. Is this just happening to me or do I make it happen? Usually it's you making it happen. Um, and I've made, a, in my personal life, a lot of that stuff happen. And again, who knows? Six months into that relationship, I could be someplace different, like Hawaii. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, you know, you're right. Well, I think it's important, as you said, about sort of, you know, uh, making that space in your mind and sort of, you know, um, you know, getting rid of that baggage, you know, that, that, you know, cause you're just believing it on your own, you know, you got to make space in your mind for it. That that's really important. And, you know, as we sort of talked about off camera, I just, uh, but I want to say it again here, just, I send my condolences to you regarding the loss of your mother. That was, you know, I send my deepest sympathies. Um, thank you. Um, this one was tough. Um, I'm going to try to hold it here as much as I can, because it, um, as we do this, it's only a month and two days, I believe, uh, since. And I thought I was prepared for grief and condolences. And this is something I, I, I'd like to pass on um, to your viewers. Um, I'm, I, I don't know if this is a universal experience, but there's going to be one or a couple of passings in your life that are going to hit you harder than anything else, and you're not expecting it. And there's nothing you can do to prepare for it. No one can say anything, really. Um, you, It just hits hard. Um, Mom, hmm. um, the books are dedicated to her. The first book was solely dedicated to my mother uh, because she wanted a life upon the wicked stage. Um, she never had it. I had it. I got it. The second book uh, was dedicated to her, but I also dedicated to my father Yes, as, as well. Um, th she received, this book was out in 2016, the, the second edition. It was delayed. And I'm glad it's delayed because it's been updated now for this new era that we're in. In fact, I was updating it right until we went into print. I had to throw th some things in. But back to this. Um, I sent her a copy of the, of the book uh, when at our, our country was having an experience of a slowdown in mail uh, deliberately. And I was told by the postmaster, oh, it won't arrive for three or four weeks. And I, I wrote my mother and father a, a nice inscription telling them that they are responsible for people's careers that they don't know, uh, people's wonder and enjoyment uh, that they don't know, or people's angst uh, when I was an actor. Anyway, I got a text a few days later. It was from my mother. And she said, your book just arrived. 
Uh, and I love the cover better than the first one. And I <laughs> plan to start reading it tomorrow. Unfortunately, next day she went into hospice. Um, so she never got a chance to read it. But um, mom's here with me. She really is. And that might sound weird, but. No, not at all. There, some, at things, all. some things happened as she was in hospice that were quite shocking yeah. uh, here. Uh, over a thousand miles away, I couldn't be with my family or her during the end. But she's here, and she's definitely in the book. Mom, yes. uh, mom liked her attention, <laughs> uh, and I mean it in a good way. Yeah. Uh, she wanted to be an actress, never got it, and she was happy that I became an actress. Well, she certainly is with. I me. mean, if you're to say happy, I became an actress. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yes, how you became an actress? Well, Hell no. Well. No. Thank you. She is always with you and, you know, uh, very special and powerful. And I'm sure she is so proud of you and, you know, the lives that she has touched that, you know, both of your parents have touched um, from, you know, as you mentioned. Uh, let's actually um, talk now. I know you have a special code for um, my viewers um, for the book. And yeah. um, um, this is something I, I want to do because people think when you do a book, I'm going to give you the code, but People think that when you write a book, you must be making tons and tons of money. And I used to hate selling the book, book online, but I'm a marketing whore because I want to help. I do not make tons of money. If I were making tons of money, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't be drinking Diet Coke. I don't know. Um, I'd be drinking, hell no, I don't know what. But anyway, actors, almost anyone, money, when you're living alone, especially, it's hard to come by. And so the price point of the new edition, I'm not comfortable with. So I asked my publisher for a little help here. They've given me a private discount code and I will give that out whenever I can. And I, it takes 30% off the book. It brings it down to a fantastic price. And I give it out uh, whenever I say, please take the code use it. It's just what a publisher gives to me as an author. You can use it far better than I. So let me uh, bring that up here for you yes. on the screen if I can. Yes. This is going to be a little bit more artful uh, <laughs> as to share the screen. Yeah, share no problem. And yeah. bring up the application well, window. What? Screen. All right, we have to be in artful here then. I'm going to the entire screen, everyone has to get to see my dirty laundry. No, it's all right. Once it is shared, I will come up on my end. It would be great. All right. Let me go into down here yeah. as everyone's looking around going, what does no, he have? It's not, a, it's not, a, I don't have it up yet. So whenever you're, when you have it up, let me know and I'll put it on screen. It's in the waiting room. So, oh, I've, I've got it up. All right. Let's bring this up. Wonderful. And so, this Folks, here's the thing. There's a video that shows you because you have to know how to get through the websites to apply their code. There's a special code and it only lasts for a little time. Uh, I will keep trying to get an updated code, but just send me an email to Paul Russell at actingmakeityourbusiness.com. And this is important because this is to get the email to generate back to you you must put in the subject line heading discount code video. Once that email lands in that e-box, it's going to generate the email, send you a link to the video, which has which is password protected. You get to see the video. I lead you through how to use the code. You get the code. Then you just use the code uh, as instructed and you get close to $10 off the book. And that's on top of what the discount they already have to the public, but you're getting a private discount uh, instead. That is great. That is incredible. So it's up on the screen, every one of you, uh, as uh, I can speak, as you've been seeing, um, you know, as everything that Paul said about with his, with the code, where you can send the email to, um, thank you for sharing that with yeah, and I'm going to take it down. And, and one thing about this, uh, by the way, again, Paul Russell at actingmakeitourbusiness.com. 
Um, you will not get it. I got to bring you back up now. There we go. You will not get it any cheaper at Amazon, unfortunately. I would love for you to get it at Amazon uh, cheaper. Um, you have to go through this way. I do not make extra money off of you going through the book's website and going through the publisher. No. Um, so use the discount code. It's the only place of everywhere it sells. You're going to get Acting Make It Your Business at a low price. And also go to actingmakeityourbusiness.com or go to my website, paulrussell.net, which also leads you to the book. Uh, and also, hell, I'm going to plug it if you want classes. Really? <laughs> well, the, here's the thing. Classes in the book. For someone who had to go to summer school to graduate because he didn't wear gym clothes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and for someone who didn't know what the hell a gerund was. Uh, it amazed me when the first edition came out and all of a sudden I'm teaching master classes at universities like Rutgers. I'm appearing on campuses of Yale. Uh, books around the world are using, I mean, books, universities around the world that train actors are using the book as required reading. And they're inviting me in to teach. Uh, before the book, I didn't think, hell no. Me? Teach? Uh, no, um, I, 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 I'm not worthy of the actors. Oh. No, really, true. I remember the first time I had to teach a master class at, uh, I think it was James Madison University. Mm -hmm. I'm in the hallway right before the class begins and I'm calling up a friend at the time and I'm going, I can't do this. Um, me? And I was, here's, Here's what actors have to learn. Again, it's in your head. I was ruining myself. I was doing myself in with doubt. I was discounting everything I already had done in my career. Casting for major TV, casting for studio films, working with legendary directors and actors. And it was all because of insecurity had grown out of something uh, in my teenage years. Stop it. And it's the same thing to actors. Get the hell out of your head. You'll be better off. <laughs> but uh, no, so it's, I'm glad my mom got to see that. Uh, it's not a prideful thing of me, not at all. Um, it's just knowing which something personal. But it's great. It's it does, and it's not prideful. It's it, it's great that you, um, because of the book, you've had these opportunities to do that. You know, and share your uh, expertise, your knowledge, your uh, experience, and be able to you know do that. So that I think that that's wonderful and, yeah. and something to be uh, very proud of. And the teaching of classes thrills me. I. God, I enjoy it so much. Uh, I discover new things from actors, which is fantastic. I keep learning. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, but I have taught everything from um, marketing to audition technique to online technique. Well before uh, COVID pandemic, I was teaching people via Skype uh, and other platforms live who were in uh, Korea or who were in Germany. I taught a whole wow. a whole classroom of students at a university in Germany somewhere around 10 years ago. Um, so when you all got onto Zoom and everything else after <laughs> the pandemic, going like, oh, excuse me, I was there long before you and none of you would even fucking go for it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no, it's good. I promise not to drop an f bomb, and I did, uh, which I do in a book. Oh, um, good. But um, it, it, it yeah. oh my God, you're seeing it right here. It rejuvenates the soul to learn and to share. Yeah. And that's why I respect teachers so much. It's a hard job. 
for them. Yes, yes. Well, I can tell it lights you up and it rejuvenates you. And um, thank you again for sharing that code. Um, uh, that's the best place to get it, everyone. I, as you said, I mean, if you don't want to use the code, you can go to the booksellers and get it. I'm sure they have it as well, uh, Amazon and Barnes and Noble. But uh, definitely, if you can, you know, especially in today's times, so if you can use that code for sure, please use it. And if you're rewatching this, you know, just uh, scroll back and you'll be able to see it. Or if you were joining live and you missed it, just scroll back, you'll be able to see it. Um, and a question, if I may. Yeah, of course. If you go to Amazon. Yeah. This is something I've been trying to work with the publisher on and Amazon with. And they click on the new edition, which is the gold cover. They have to. Do not be frightened when the hard copy edition comes up. Stay away from the hard copy edition. Because you're going to look at that price and go, really? Like I did? You've got to be joking me. <laughs> click on the paperback version. You do not want to buy a hard copy version for the outrageous price. I don't know who would buy that. The paperback version is like in the twenty dollar range. That's yeah. <laughs> the, the, it sounds you know the hardback copy sounds like who would buy that? It, it does sound like a required reading at school that they would make the the kids buy. That's what it sounds like. Is it sounds like that would is what you would buy at the college bookstore? The hard copy, you know. So an actor, really? No, I. I, mean, I screamed, my, my publisher is in London. I screamed across the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> I, saw I, that. Blame. I think I think it's important to get the, the softback copy, but I'm saying the hardback copy, knowing how universities can be, they'll that's out there so they can, you know, the student can go to the bookstore and have to pay that a hundred dollars. Hopefully not, but yeah. you know, I that that's what it's there for because you know they always wanna they always wanna get you somewhere in these school uh school school stores. What is one thing that you hope that uh, people will take away from reading this book? That's a good question. Or two things. Right? Yeah. Um, and this, this book originally, when the first edition and the second edition were uh, written, it wasn't written for just the actor who's interested in acting. It was written for actors who I saw coming in, Broadway actors, screen actors, who are just making mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. Um, to start, what I hope they get, to start taking more charge of their career. There's a difference between control and charge. A charge is a leader. Control, you really can't. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and again, people who participate in it, the working actors like uh, Sunil Sledger, who, who give fantastic, fantastic advice. And unfortunately, we lost some of the working actors from the first edition. Uh, they passed away. And I was going to get rid of them, but I couldn't because what they have to say, like a James Rephorn, and, and I, I wrote on social media to people who already read the book, Jimmy Rephorn, what do you think about him? And they said, keep him in there. He changed my career for me. And so we had people like, like Phyllis Somerville, may she rest in peace. Um, she passed as the book was in print, uh, the second edition. And for anyone watching right now, there is a wonderful video of uncensored, unheard, and unpublished uh, material in a live interview that I did with Phyllis, both for the first book and the second book. That's out there. Just go to either uh, Answers for Actors or uh, the YouTube channel for Paul Russell Casting, which is currently being revamped. Her laugh, her insight, her knowledge, I, I cry every time I listen to it and I laugh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I laugh hysterically every time I listen, listen to it. She is beautiful. Yeah. And another thing for the actors to take away is the last one, because there's so much in the book, because it goes from everything from education to training to um, marketing to finding representation, how to keep representation, uh, to also now being more on your own, uh, how to negotiate contracts, uh, how to handle auditions, how to prepare for auditions. Um, also, this edition has more up here for the brain and the actor. I can't put, I, I, I approach it a different way, but here's something that actors 
need to take away from this, and not only in career, but in life. And especially I've passed 18 months. A good friend of mine, who's also a fantastic actress, she's in the book. And even if she wasn't a friend of mine, she'd still be in the book because she works a lot, she's grounded, she's got a good sense of who she is, and she's got a good sense about being an actor. And when I, one thing she says about being an actor, and again, this is continuous for life, you have to have the hide of a rhinoceros in the soul of a child. You really do. For all the rejection, all the hell that you go through, uh, the ups and downs, the uncertainty, yet to keep that idealism, to keep that joy, you really do have to have the hide of rhinoceros and the soul of a child. And if you have been through the hell I have been through the past 18 months, and people don't know the full of it, right? It's been a lot. And that's a, a little piece. Yeah. We've got a big announcement coming soon. Yes. So change <laughs> my life, change actors' lives, and change my family's life. And I'm going to be announcing it shortly. Yes. So stay tuned, everyone. That is a good. Um, uh, I guess it would be analogy that you made about the uh, height of a rhino and the soul of a child. That is, you know, um, I, I'm not an actor, but I do know how, you know, crushing it is and how soul crushing it can be, how joyous it can be, but also how hard it can be. I, you know, uh, we spoke about this prior. I interned in casting for about six months. And the one thing that for me, aside from the crazy experiences that came from it, both good and bad, just to see these actors, these beautiful human beings day in and day out of the, audition room of the open call of the dance call constantly you know putting their soul on the line their heart on the line and a lot of times it was the same people in that six month period you know it was the same people coming into dance call after dance call uh you know open call after open call and just being there and ready to work you know by the end of it and even by the end of the day i was tired you know i was physically i felt like and i'm not diminishing what they did, but I felt like I was just in an audition all day uh, doing an open call because, and if I felt like that, I can't even imagine for the actors for, the, you know, how, you know, how tough, how tiresome, but you know, that perseverance that they feel, because I mean, it is, it, it is a very hard, hard job, but you know, it's rewarding when you see, um, it come to fruition for sure, you know? And, and making it harder are those casting directors, talent agents and talent managers and people in the industry who get a sense of too much of themselves. Uh, who can, I'll, I'll just say it, who are bitches. Yeah. Um, you and I have discussed this both. We've, we've been associated with them, we've worked with them. And so when I'm doing auditions, whether it is virtual, online or self tape or live again, <laughs> uh, I want that actor to feel as comfortable as they can. I hate casting directors who put so much attitude, or directors who put attitude in a room or in an audition. That's not needed. It, how the hell does it help the director or the casting director accomplish their job? It doesn't. How does it help the actor? It doesn't. Stop the BS. The act, we should, we're lucky that the actor's there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. It's always been a, a, a pet peeve of mine. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it's a great pet peeve to have. It's important. I think it, it makes you, that's what makes you so unique and so valuable and so, um, you know, so special in what you do. And so, you know, while, why you're so well known and everyone likes you is because of how you have that mindset. And that's important to, to have, you know? I have to tell you though, recent things, um, before recent th things happened, I didn't think so, but something, oh my God, the, the entertainment community, it's not about liking. I, I wanna give you an example of people who have the height of rhinoceros and the soul of a child. It came out at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, I had found a new place to live, thank God, but I had nothing, no silverware, no linens, nothing person I used to know had done something with all that. So an actress uh, who's also a great friend of mine said, why don't you um, do a registry online via Facebook? 
to go. Right? We're going to a shutdown. People don't have money. No, this is, no, I can't do that. I don't want to. So I did. And the minute I did, did it, I closed the laptop and I said, I don't want to look. Within an hour, I could not believe the outpouring of people who didn't even know me, some strangers who read the book or followed me on any platform on social media or friends just came out of nowhere and just started uh, rebuilding, or as I said, putting a casting director in his place. Um, people I worked with a long time ago, the lighting in my house, silverware, linens, all was thanks to the generosity of actors who they themselves were facing such uncertainty. And they were my guardian angels. And a friend of mine said, you know, you're living in a cocoon of love. That is, that is so, so true. A cocoon of love indeed. Wow. I mean, that is, that is just, my, and when you told me that, I just, I thought that was so special. And it, that also just goes to show how much love and how um, selfless, uh, you know, performers and actors in this community is, you know, that, that while we were facing, you know, this uncertainty of, you know, right, right after the shutdown and the pandemic endured that, you know, still people came to, you know, your aid and, you know, cared about you so much and, you know, gave you what you needed. And then some, I just, that is, that, that is so special. And it fills my heart with happiness for you. So, you know. I was to getting out of your head because I was in my head thinking other things. Yeah. And so actors, if you think there's no one out there who doesn't consider you, doesn't think about you, uh, they are, they just might be quiet, but they will come. Mm -hmm. I will come to you. Someone's gonna come. And that's the thing, pushing ahead. If I can get through what I call, <laughs> I've won the, the, the hand at poker of crisis in the past 18 months. If I can get through it, my God, anyone can. They really can. Yes, and yes, they can. You, you have that right for sure. In your time in casting, what has been one, and it might be hard to choose, one funny or one crazy moment that you've had as a casting director that you just, you know, put it down that will live with you for the rest of time? Uh, do you, I'm sure there's been many. Oh, there, there's, there's quite a few uh, in both editions of the book and updated ones too, to include what I see uh, in self tapes or online auditions. Um, What's, I think one of the, the more shocking ones was when I was casting a, a New York play and I called in this actor for this really adorable, cuddly, gamine role. You, you just want to hold him uh, and take care of him. And he's so warm and, and loving. And the audition's going on and I, I'm looking at him going, Oh, there's another role that we might be calling him in for that's even sweeter than this. And as I'm leaning into the producer's ear, all of a sudden he pulls down his pants, his underwear, and he starts playing with his genitalia in front of us. Ah! <laughs> um, and I, we didn't know what to say. We were just dead quiet at the end of the audition and he pulls up his underwear, pulls up his pants, and I couldn't even say thank you or goodbye. He just left. I did call his agent up uh, and I told the agent what happened and the agent disavowed any association with him or the genitalia. Oh yes, this is in the book. I remember reading, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, one thing that's in the new edition, um, also it's, it's not funny, but it's also about how we don't have control. Um, and I'm not going to name names here, but I was casting um, I had cast a play in New York, um, produced by someone very famous, and it was it was up and running, and we needed to cast understudies, and so I, I called in uh, someone that my then uh, partner uh, represented. He used to own a, a talent agency, and he this young actor just came out of school 
he came in and he was the first person to audition that day. And he was like maybe three lines into it. And I went, great. He's made my day easier. Everyone else who comes in after this, icing on the cake. And so I'm sitting back going, I'm enjoying this. I'm loving this. He's fan fucking fantastic. And he leaves. I turn to the director and going, so? <laughs> Knowing that he's got to love this actor. He's got to. And the director says, he's, he's absolutely perfect. He, he's great. It's wonderful. He's like, yes, he is. So there's the person that we need. And the director goes, there's a problem. I can't cast him. I mean, you can't cast him. I'd rather than the director was more interested in a different nature. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and I said, you gotta be fucking joking. Really? And so the actor cast was very good. But he, he didn't get the job. And I found out years later that this actor, who's now quite famous, still harbored not getting that as an understudy. Yeah. Uh, but still harbors resentment, and he doesn't know why. But if you're watching right now, and if I can just say one word, Peach, you know what project it was for. <laughs> yes. Yes, you. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, I'm just going to fix this light here. As I do this, um, <laughs> my, 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 my lighting uh, has has. I have to adjust. What is one thing as we finish up here? What is one thing actors need to know in 2021 that will help them with their careers moving forward to better themselves in those roles as we move forward in this new, I guess you could say, era of performance? Well, that's the thing uh, in this new era because we really don't know what the new era is going to be. Uh, although I predicted somewhat cautiously what it's going to be. Uh, and it's going to be beyond. 2021 and because I, I wrote the book for the next 10 years. I don't want to do another one. I hate <laughs> writing books. Uh, what did he need to know? I'm going to say it's pretty much the same thing I've been saying all along. Take more charge of yourself. And I, I, I think now that a position like a casting director or a talent rep is might be become less necessary and we're going to be more reliant for good or bad for the actor for the the actor to be everything uh what i mean is representing themselves negotiating for themselves uh creating as we know now the audition experience for themselves mm -hmm. um and I, Part of me does resent that, not as a casting director, but as a person, that the actor has to take on so much. Speaking of such, in the updated version, there's a lot that you've got on setting up your own studio in wherever you live <laughs> on low-tech end and the high-tech end. Um, I am. Uh, yes, you've got a very nice, nice virtual reality, nice lighting and all that. Um, well, that's what I was going to laugh. I was going to say, one man show here is the light fell and you were speaking. I was like, let me fix this. So. <laughs> Maybe someday I will reveal what's on the other side of this camera. If I took pictures of it, if you saw it. <laughs> uh, but um, take more responsibility. Um, and it's not, a, it's not, a, I'm not, um, I can't think of the word right now. I should be a writer. Um, it's not a slight. Yeah, it's more of the more that you are involved uh, with what your career is in all aspects, uh, the happier you're going to be, the more less, the less anxiety you're, you're going to have. Um, comfortable, you'll sleep better at night. And yes, there are, are things that you can't, and here's the word, that's why it's wrong, I have to think control. There's things that you can't control because if you go back to that audition with that famous actor who didn't get it because, hey, um, you're going to go nuts. So take charge. 
take charge of your career, take charge of everything. And that's what I try to convey. And that's what the other people, the participants who are giving to you in uh, I Can Make Your Business, like the actors, the talent agents, um, the managers and uh, directors, there's a lot more people giving say in this. And don't give up on traditional marketing. marketing. Read the book and you'll find out. There are a lot of people in our side of the table who are saying, get back to traditional marketing as well as innovative new marketing. You're doing yourselves in. You'll find out why. I'm going to give it all away here. No, they need to read the book. They need to read the book. Yeah, I give it away on the sidewalk. Yeah, no, you. they need to read the book. They know where to go. You can visit paulrussell.net. Look at you. <laughs> I, can, I can prepared for the most part um, to get the book, to learn more. You're on Facebook. You can play <laughs> director, author. And then, I love you. You're fantastic. You are, this is it. you are embracing it. And follow on Twitter at Paul Russell. A little bit. Yeah. Casting CSTG. Well, you know, I want to, there's so many things that you can do on this platform and I like to take advantage of them and I don't have anyone doing it for me. So I am, I'm here plugging away. And, you know, uh, as you said, I, I mean, you so cleverly said a marketing whore. I, you know, I, I feel that same way and that's okay. You know, but it's, there's, there's this platform. I love doing it and uh, I'm able to, uh, you know, Plug all this. So I like being able to have you say your website and it pop up. It feels very fancy and official. <laughs> now that, that you treat people on social media like humans. And there's something in the book I I, I, we, I talk about and others talk about, about how to use, uh -huh, I can't talk, social media uh, to your advantage. And actors, and I'm guilty of it too. Uh, casting director and author director wasn't doing it right. I learned from a different community. I learned from the community of authors and uh, literary agents. And I watched how they interact on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Went, oh, <laughs> stupid me, why didn't I think of that? It's in the book, I'm not giving it away. Like I said, no. I give it away on the street. <laughs> do not give it away, do not give it away, visit. Uh, visit paulrussell.net to get it. If you're just joining us or if you're rewatching it, you'll be able to see, if you're joining us now live, scroll back, you'll be able to see the discount code that Paul gave. If you're rewatching, you've seen the discount code, um, make sure you purchase the book. And before we go, Paul, I just wanna thank you for doing this. As a reminder, everyone, I love what I do. I love providing you content. Again, if you are so inclined, please feel free to donate and help support myself and the show, as well as my platform, ridethenewsguy.com. Go to ridethenewsguy.com to donate. Um, anything you are able to, it means the world to me and uh, your support means more than you know. Paul, thank you for taking the time out of your day to do this, to talk with me, to give us such great advice and life lessons and so much from somebody who is so talented and so unique and so inspiring. Um, you know, thank you for taking the time. My pleasure. Thank you. You, you brought life back to me today. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad, Paul. I'm so glad. Well, take care, everyone. Thank you.